Chapter 13. Chalk Chalk. The whole village waited for the medicine man. He arrived early in the morning and began at once to build an altar in a cleared space in the bush near the village. Every man and boy of the village was present except father. His leg was healing, but he was not yet strong enough to take an active part, and some felt, considering his accident, that he might be in disfavor with the chalks. Tigre could represent his family. He was the lucky one. At noon the altar, built on a table platform constructed of bush trees and vines, was finished. Not a nail was used. Now the men went far into the bush to get the sacred water. No woman had ever visited the rainmaker's well. Only the chalks had ever come here to fill their calabashes when they were preparing to water the corn. The entrance to the well was a dark, narrow passage through rock. Following the medicine man, the men crawled like snakes through the opening. Each lowered his calabash and filled it with the holy water and crawled out. When the men returned in the late afternoon, they hung the gourds above and besides the altar. Hammocks began to swing beneath the trees, for now that the rainmaker's water was on the altar, no man must go home. All through the night there were prayers and ceremonies, and all the next day prayers were offered to the gods. Sacred breads were offered on the altar. Men and boys went into the bush to hunt animals for sacrifice. You will kill two deer toward the west, the medicine man told them, looking in his stone, and the men went off, shouting. But later they returned, unsuccessful and anxious. The zip protected the deer, the medicine man said. Try once more. And again the men went off. This time they returned with one small deer. The third day dawned hot and still and cloudless. Baljay, a ceremonial drink, was offered, and hens were sacrificed, one hen from each man in the village. And now, after the days of preparation, the moment had come at last to implore the chaks for rain. Pejo's father was chosen to represent Gunkuchak, the leader of the rain gods. He was given a calabash and a wooden knife to represent the lelem, with which this chalk made lightning. Then he was carried to his station a little distance from the altar. Four boys were chosen to be frogs. The medicine man looked into his stone and made his choices. One, Juan Cupul. Two, three, then four, Dionisio Cu, he said. Tigre trembled all over. The other frogs were older. He, Tigre, to be chosen, too, to bring the rain? With the others, he knelt beneath the altar and was tied by his right foot to the inner altar post. There was a great stillness. The altar was no longer an altar. It was the world, and at each corner of the world a being stood, not a village man, but a chalk. All the gods of the bush and the corn gods were gathered unseen at the altar. The medicine man knelt and began to pray, and men and boys knelt behind him, silent in the presence of the gods. In the stillness, the Kunku Chak rose to his feet and waved his lilam. He began to roar in a thunderous voice, the Chak's thunder. The frogs began to croak. The medicine man prayed. The thunder sounded. The Kunju Chak waved his lighting. The frogs croaked and croaked. And in the heart, in the soul of every man, was the silent imploring prayer, Give us rain. When it was over, Digre went home. He could hardly lift his head for weariness and lack of sleep. How did it go, father asked anxiously. Truly, father, it was wonderful. The medicine man chose Pejoro's father as Kunkuchak. The thunder sounded and the lightning flashed. I was a frog. They say I am a favorite of the Chaks and Balams, Tigre said. Do not boast, great-grandmother said sternly. If you are such a favorite as you say, why is it the Chaks withhold rain from your Mota as from the others? Tell me that. He does not mean it for boasting, mother said. It is an honor to be a frog, and when one is twelve, the Chaks will understand. Now the rain will come. I feel it, father said.